Today is the second day of ER. Now recently I read a story just last week about a community, a street, that got together and wrote a letter. And they delivered it to the garbage collectors, the team of garbage collectors who come up their street every day to collect the garbage. And these garbage collectors read the letter and they were deeply moved. The letter from the street neighbors said, Dear garbage collectors, during this coronavirus, everyone is applauding and saluting the heroes, which are the doctors and the nurses and the hospitals, the first responders, the paramedics, the police, the fire rescue, who are on the front lines, risking their lives every day to keep us safe and to find cures and help people during this crisis. But we want you to know that you are also superheroes because you too are doing your job every day, coming around and collecting the trash, exposing yourself also to the risk of catching the virus by collecting our refuse. And we appreciate it deeply because we can't even imagine what we would feel like if our streets were filled with garbage, with litter, it's because we come out and we feel the cleanliness and the peacefulness of the street that we can have some sense of normalcy during these times. And it reminded me of the meaning of today, the second day of VR. Second day of VR is the birthday of the fourth Lubavitcher Rebbe. He was nicknamed the Rebbe Marash, <coughs> which was an acronym for his name, Rabbi Shmuel of Lubavitch. He was born in the year 1834 in the city of Lubavitch, and he went on to become the fourth Lubavitch Rebbe when he succeeded his father, the Tzemach Tzedek. But the story is told that when he was born on the second day of ER, which is today, in the year 1834, 186 years ago, his bris was scheduled for today, and of course in Jewish law it says you should always rush to do a mitzvah. <clears throat> and therefore we're supposed to seize the first opportunity to do a mitzvah. So everyone expected the bris to take place first thing in the morning. The morning of the bris came, everyone assembled, the moel was ready, but the tzemach tzedek, the father of the baby, didn't come out of his room. They waited all morning, early afternoon, mid-afternoon, finally late afternoon, just before it was going to get dark. And once it's dark, you can no longer perform the circumcision. The father, the tzemach tzedek, came out for the bris of his son. Everyone was amazed. Why so late in the day? Usually you seize the first opportunity a bris should be done early in the morning. Like we find with Abraham, he got up early in the morning to go do the mitzvah that God told him to go do. And then there was a second surprise. When it came to name the baby, they, he, the father said his name will be Shemuel. And no one knew who was Shemuel. There was no Shemuel in the family. Usually you name after a relative who passed away. <clears throat> and nobody knew who Shemuel was. So they went over and they asked him, who was Shemuel? After a big funeral for this influential leader of the community, they then went to take care of this water carrier. And a few people gathered for his funeral. <clears throat> he said this water carrier was a very great Jew, a pious Jew. And his name was Shemuel. And I named my son after this water carry from the city of Plotsk. And that's why I had to wait till the end of the day. Because under Jewish tradition, you can't name after someone until the person is buried. And therefore, I had to wait for his funeral in order to name my son after him. And what a beautiful lesson in life. That we should never underestimate the greatness, the value of a human being. We should cherish every person. It doesn't matter if they're a garbage collector or if they are a water carrier. Every person has a divine holy spark, a soul, a part of Hashem. And therefore we should show equal respect and love to every human being. We started learning today the parshas of Achrimos and Kedoshim. In the portion of Kedoshim, we have the most important commandment in the Torah. Kamocha, Love your neighbor as yourself. The famous story of a convert who came to Hill and said, teach me the Torah, entire Torah on one foot. And Hill said, well, you don't want others to do to you, don't do unto others. That's the whole Torah. Everything else is commentary. And therefore, in the center of the portion of the book of Ayikra Leviticus, Leviticus is the 
centerpiece of the Torah. It's the third book out of the five books. And the middle Torah portion is Kedoshim. And right in the middle of the Torah portion, you have the commandment, <clears throat> which is like the epicenter of the Torah. The landmark commandment of love your neighbor as yourself. And the famous teacher, Rabbi Akiva, said, <clears throat> love your neighbor as yourself is the most all-encompassing principle of the whole Torah, of all of Judaism, as Hillel told the convert. What you don't want others to do to you, don't do unto others. That's the whole Torah. Everything else is commentary. Now go learn the rest of the commentary Hill said to the convert. And Rabbi Akiva taught that same lesson. The Zekla God of is the most important principle in the entire Torah. <clears throat> and that's why during this period of time, we, as we get ready to receive the Torah at Mount Sinai, we count 49 days. This, tonight, today's the 17th day of the Omer. What is the final, the pinnacle of getting ready to get the Torah at Mount Sinai? And the 49th day, what does the Torah say? The Jewish people dwelled facing the mountain, Mount Sinai. <clears throat> The Torah uses the singular word. Vayichan, they rested. And the rabbis say, why they rested in the singular? They rested, at, millions of people rested at Mount Sinai after they left Egypt. And the rabbis say four of the most beautiful words. Ki ishachad, belevachad. They rested like one person with one heart. What does it mean to rest with, as one person with one heart? That everyone wanted the best for each other. And that's something that we have to learn during these times. Everyone's working together. Everyone wants the same goal, to find the cure to get out of quarantine. The whole world is working in unison, in concert with one another. Unlike normal times where people are quabbling, squabbling, and having internal rifts, and attacking, and trying to undermine and undercut each other, put themselves above the next person. Now we all realize we have to work together. It doesn't matter which country you're from, which religion, which race, which party you belong to. We're all one. Don't we realize that today? We're all like one person with one heart. That's the lesson that we have to learn as we get ready for Mount Sinai. And that is also why Rabbi Kiva taught the lesson that love your neighbors yourself is the most important part of the Torah. Because Rabbi Kiva's students died during this period of time. And that's why the Sefira days that we're in now are days of mourning. No haircuts are allowed, no weddings are allowed, no concerts are allowed. Even if we weren't in quarantine, we wouldn't be allowed to do these things during this period of counting the Omer. Why? Because the period when the students of Akiva died. And our Talmud says, why did the students of Akiva die? And our Rabbi say, Shalom Nagu Kavod Zebazai. They didn't show each other respect. Showing every human being the proper respect. Derech Eretz. <clears throat> Appreciating every human being. Loving every human being. Seeing the good. It could be a garbage collector, it could be a water carrier. Every person is a part of God and therefore every person has divine dignity. And every person should be afforded that respect, that kindness, that love, that generosity. Don't overlook anyone. Don't just think there are certain people on the top of the pyramid who are important and ignore the people on the bottom. Respect for every human being. Conclude with a story, you know, tomorrow night is Yom HaZikaron, we mourn 20 over 20,000 soldiers who died in all the battles defending Israel since 1948. And also we remember the thousands who died through terrorist attacks. <clears throat> and, you know, following story, a true story was told that a soldier was once, a young soldier was killed in battle and his family sitting Shiva as they mourned his passing. And during one of the days of Shiva, his fifth grade teacher, a woman came into the room, to the Shiva home, to offer condolences to the parents. And the mother ran over and gave her a big hug and started to cry uncontrollably. And the teacher was very touched and she said, I came to offer condolences. I remember your son, he was my student in fifth grade. He was a wonderful student. The mother said, you have no idea the impact you've had on my son's life. And the teacher was surprised. He was a nice student, but she didn't realize that she had such a deep, profound impact on his life. And the mother said, wait here. <clears throat> the mother came back from the bedroom with her son's army uniform that the army had returned to her after her son was buried. The uniform he was wearing at the moment he was killed at the young age of 21 and she reached into his back pocket of his pants and took out a folded piece of paper. And the mother said to the fifth grade teacher, we found this in his back pocket. And she opened up this paper, which had been opened and folded hundreds and hundreds of times and was very worn out. 
She immediately started to cry because she remembered what this was. When this boy was in fifth grade, this teacher gave the kids an assignment. She gave every kid in the class a list of every student in the class. And she told the students, write something nice, something positive, something good about each one of your classmates. When all of the kids handed in the assignment, the teacher went home and compiled under each kid's name all the good things that every classmate said about that kid with the name of the classmate and what they said. <clears throat> and the next day the teacher gave each student a list of all the good things that they said about each other. And the teacher said, I want you to see how much your friends love you and appreciate you for who you are. This piece of paper that this boy got in fifth grade was the paper that he carried with him his entire life. And when he went to battle, and every soldier when he goes to battle may know that this could be their last day, and they know that they need tremendous strength. What one piece of paper did he cherish the most in his life and take with him to the battlefield? And he fell in battle holding this paper in his pocket. The kind words that all of his classmates said about him. What a powerful lesson in life to appreciate every human being, to express love for every human being, to express gratitude to every human being. That's the lesson of the days of the Omer, of the students of Rebbe Kiva. That's the lessons in quarantine. Start noticing and appreciating. Get to know your garbage collector by his first name and say thank you tomorrow morning. Or say thank you to the mailman. Or say thank you to all the people that bring some normalcy to our lives during these days. And then when we reach the day of Mount Sinai to get the Torah and the holiday of Shavuos, we will be truly ki'ish like one human being, belev with one heart. Have a wonderful day.